All right, so we have our game off to a good start. So the next thing I want to start working on is, you know, how's my player going to start scoring points or something for him to do in game besides just walk around and look at the scenery and be chased by cubes. So let's go ahead and give him some sort of gun. And let's just have him launch projectiles. And let's have when those projectiles hit one of the evil cubies, it'll destroy that evil cubie and he gets some sort of amount of points, a point or a hundred or whatever it is in your game. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead, select my FPS controller. I want to zoom in and I want to open up this game object and go to the child game object. Remember any game object that is underneath another one is referred to as a child game object. The one above it is a parent game object. And I'm going to go ahead and make another child game object under here. And I'm going to make a cube. And I'm going to go ahead and extend this cube. Let's just move it forward a bit. And I'm looking for it to occlude the area here where I can see. So there we go. We're at about there. Then I'm going to go ahead over here and start scaling it. Maybe 0.2 on the X, Y, and we'll leave the Z at 1. Now, down here, I want it to kind of come in from the side here, kind of at an angle. So I'm going to rotate it a bit. Go over, move it. Move it down. I probably should not have me in the shade for this. And we can go ahead and just move that back. And it's just a little bit bigger than I want. So I'm going to go ahead, maybe half the size that it is now. So I'll do 0.1 by 0.1. There we go. I'm going to grab the whole thing. So the absolute parent game object. I'm going to move them out of the shadows just so I can see a bit better here. All right, good enough. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select them. And a couple of the components here I don't want, at least one. And that's this box collider. Now, colliders are used to interact with the physics in Unity so they can collide essentially with things. And I don't want this gun to have a collider. Not now, anyway. Uh, because as I walk around, I start walking into trees. The trees have colliders. My gun's going to get stuck. I'm not going to be able to turn. If I have more complex geometry in the scene, it's going to get stuck. Uh, you know, houses. And so for now, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. I could even go ahead and just absolutely get rid of it because I really don't need it. But for now, I just want to turn it off. And of course, taking these turns it on and off as far as the components go. And the very top one up here, we'll actually turn the, the actual game object itself off. So any scripts or components that you have attached to it when you turn it off, are turned off as well, so they will not run. And that's what I'm going to do with our extra spawn point here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So I've only got one spawn point spawning stuff right now. All right, so I've got my gun. Let's go ahead and actually call it gun. And I'm going to go ahead and make a script for that. Now, another way to make a script is to go add component and just do new script. I don't like this. I've had trouble with where it puts scripts. So I just automatically navigate to the scripts folder and just do create C sharp script. I'm going to call it gun. And right off the bat, I'm just going to go ahead and attach it so I know it's there. I'll save my scene, double click it to open it up in mono develop. And of course, the first thing I always do is get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that off. And I have to think, how does this gun work? So I'm going to go ahead, take player input. Whenever they do perform some action, let's say press the left mouse button. I'm going to go ahead and just launch some projectile. So there's a couple things we got to do. We got to figure out where we want to launch the projectile from and also what we're going to launch. So a prefab would be what we want to launch. But as far as figuring out where we want to launch from, uh, if we try just to get the transform dot position, that's just going to get where this axes is, is set up. We don't want that. So we want some position, maybe a little bit in front of the actual barrel of the gun. And we can easily do that by, well, creating an empty, another child object. And let's just call this muzzle tip. And I'm going to go ahead and move that up here. I'm just moving it on the X or sorry, on the Z. Remember Z is forward. So good, so maybe a little bit more. So right about there is where we're gonna launch from. 
Now I'm going to save that off. We'll come back into model develop and let's set that up so we can launch from there. So I'm going to go ahead, create a public because public allows us to edit it in the inspector. We want the transform because we don't need access to the whole game object. We just want the position. And I'm going to call it just the tip. There we go. And if I save that off, we'll come back into Unity. Go ahead, grab the gun. And drag and drop it in. So now we have a place to fire from. We'll still need something to fire. Hmm. Why did it not go in? There we go. We still need something to fire. So we need some sort of prefab. We'll make that prefab later because we got to, got to add a script to it. But we can go ahead and set it up. Uh, it's a prefab. So we're going to use a game object. We could also create a specific type as well. And we'll look at that in the next one. For now, we're going to call it a game object. And I'm just going to call it prefab. We could call it projectile too. I'm just going to call it prefab for now. Now to get player input, we do that during the update. And the way we do that through Unity is we can go ahead and say input dot get mouse button down. This is the one we want, but take a look here. There's three of them and here's how they work. Mouse button down will fire off the very first frame that you press the mouse down. Mouse button up fires off on the frame where the mouse button is let up and get mouse button. Just as soon as you press it down, it just starts going off every frame until you let it back up. Now that one's not bad if you also have some sort of timer set up so you can set some sort of machine gun up. So maybe it fires off one every, I don't know, 10th of a second, quarter of a second, whatever it is that you want it for. But without a timer, it's not good because it's completely dependent on frame rate. But we're gonna use on mouse down. So when they click the mouse button, we wanna do something. But before we can do that, we also have to take a look to see what button we wanna press on. Now I know that the left mouse button is zero because I've just done it so many times. But if you're not sure, we can go ahead and highlight this and hit command apostrophe, the one right beside the enter key. And that's gonna load up the scripting API. And it'll bring you right to that actual method. And we can click on it and get some examples on how things work. And we see here that the left click is zero, right click is one, and the middle click is two. So I'm gonna jump back in. So we know this is how we detect the click. Now we need some sort of conditional statement to say that, you know, if we detect that click, then do something. And for that, we're just gonna use an if block. And an if statement works just like, well, like it sounds. If our player clicks the left mouse button, we're gonna do whatever it is that's in between these little curly braces. And just let me put a space here. It's not required. It's just formatting that I use. All right, so for the firing of the gun, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make my own method for that. I'm gonna call it void shoot. And this will handle the launching of the projectile. Uh, if I want any sort of sound effect, if I want any sort of particle effect, maybe a muzzle flash, everything can be handled out of here. So for simplicity in the update statement, I'm just gonna to check to see if he presses the left mouse button, then we're gonna go ahead and shoot. Then in shoot, just like with our spawn point, we're just gonna instantiate something. And because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. And let's go over it. So what are we gonna instantiate? We're gonna instantiate our prefab, which is gonna be our projectile. Uh, we're going to place it at our position, our current position. Nope, that's not what we want. We want to go ahead and make sure that it spawns at the just the tip. There we go. And of course, we want it pointing forward because the way our projectile is going to work is that when it goes ahead and it's instantiated, it's just going to travel forward for X amount of seconds and then destroy itself. So let's go ahead. We'll save that off. And that is it, actually. If we go ahead and save it, head back into Unity. I'm gonna go ahead into the prefabs folder. Actually, I'll come out here. I'm just gonna make a sphere for now. 
And I'll save this sphere as our projectile. I'm just going to call it projectile. All right, I'll delete the one in the scene. Let's go ahead and we'll grab the gun. I'm actually going to shrink that up so I don't ever accidentally click the muzzle tip. I'll use that sphere as the prefab. And I'll check to make sure I don't have any typos or any errors. Great. Let's go ahead and hit start. And now when I shoot, which is the left mouse button, I get an error. So it says that the gun has not been set. Ah, there we go. So let's go ahead and take a look at that error. The variable prefab of the gun has not been set. So let's go click on gun. And I put the projectile in the wrong spot. Not the first time I've ever done that. And unfortunately, it probably won't be the last. But that's okay. Once you run through it a couple times, you learn what they are and they become much easier to fix. So we'll go ahead, we'll start it back off, point up. I keep it in space to shoot, but it's not supposed to be that. So there we go. We're launching the, the ball, but of course, you know, it's too big, but it's making them, right? And that's what we wanted. So in the next video, let's go ahead and take a look at how to actually make this projectile, or this sphere, into an actual, uh, like a BB or something. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.